Welcome back to the E-Circuit. I hope you're having a good time as we are. And right about now, we just want to talk about um, the welfare of donkeys. We've been talking about, in the morning we were saying that young people need to get jobs. They need to find a way of making a living. And we know very well that um, using transportations via donkeys is one way that you can earn a living. I have Laura um, from Brook East Africa and I have Dr. Peter from Senda Cow and they'll steps we need the things we need to do so that we can ensure our donkeys are safe and they're giving us the best. So welcome so much to the show, Laura. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kindly, okay. kindly introduce yourself as to what you do in um, Brook East Africa. My name is Laura Cow. Mostly with our partners, engage with companies that they know how to take care of their. Mm -hmm. Okay, welcome. Um, Thank you. Dr. Peter. Yep. That's. In Western uh, Kenya, uh, so, uh, looking in especially yeah. the vulnerable, the smallholder, and marginalized uh, families. Uh, we are partnering with the Brook East uh, yeah. to uh, look at uh, we can improve uh, donkey welfare. There's a partnership. Well, because we appreciate that um, uh, when someone has a good income, feeding well, then you mm -hmm. can take uh, donkeys. Okay. Yeah. So tell us, so tell us um, that... why we need our donkeys to be taken care of. Africa, especially in Kenya, are and uh, for them to uh, do any work they are supposed to do, need energy. And uh, energy is got from uh, when 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 you take good care of this animal. For example, uh, a donkey would need to eat or feed. Yeah. 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 Uh, mm -hmm. for it to get that energy it needs to rest yeah mm -hmm. so that uh, it can perform tomorrow's uh, job well a donkey mm -hmm. just like any other animal or any other being may yeah. fall sick yeah and it needs to be treated it needs to be given uh, health care uh, services mm -hmm. so uh, donkeys just like any other mo uh, other animals need to be taken good care of because yeah. we need that energy from them to do mm -hmm. uh, to duties at home or in mm -hmm. any institution where they are found or kept. Okay. Um, can you donkeys and maybe some of the challenges that um, most of the donkeys that we have around encounter? Yeah, let, let, let me start by talking about Brook East Africa. And uh, East Africa is an animal welfare charity organization working yeah. with uh, nine partner organizations across East Africa. And our major work is to uh, take care of the working equine, particularly donkeys, horses, and uh, mules in other East Africa countries where they also have such animals. And our work is to transform the lives of these animals and ensure that they are uh, supporting the communities uh, to earn their livelihood. Because when you look at the communities in uh, different these animals to provide for their basic needs and also taking yeah. the children to school and particularly 
when you look at the youth, there are some that are actually mm -hmm. by these donkeys to as on a daily basis. And um, as my colleague has put it, donkeys are very important because they contribute to the livelihoods of the communities. And uh, we so do, yeah, yeah, directly. And uh, that, that by taking for us is very important. When you look at uh, most of the communities, particularly in semi-arid areas, they are we use these donkeys to fetch water. Uh, mm -hmm. Others in high potential areas are using the animals to transport goods from mm -hmm. uh, farms to their homes and also to the market. And this yes. is a very important animal that uh, is working to ensure that we live better. So as they work, they, they are faced mm -hmm. with a number of challenges, uh, mm -hmm. which is attributed to how people relate with them and how people take care of them. So they uh, use, they carry goods by pack. So, so you find that there are quite a number of welfare issues that are associated with the uh, uh, animals. And some of these include uh, uh, injuries that cause wounds. Maybe a few of the community members don't really know how to go about uh, uh, provision of some of the basic uh, animal needs like uh, feed, water, and also mm -hmm. medical services. So there are quite a number of uh, issues that we try to address to make sure that the donkeys are able to support the communities uh, maximally. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh -huh. So, so um, what are you doing? So that's to, to make sure that you ease some of these burdens for people who have donkeys. Is an organization that is? Yeah, as an organization, that, uh, these, uh, the, we look at it from different uh, perspectives. One of it is uh, engaging the donkey owners and users who actually mm -hmm. stay with animals uh, like uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. And you know donkeys don't stick. So it's yeah. us who, who are supposed mm -hmm. to ensure that uh, we take care of them. And some of the things that we do with the communities is to give them the knowledge and skills mm -hmm. that is required for them to be able to uh, ensure that their donkeys are taken care of appropriately. And this includes uh, issues around provision of water, uh, provision mm -hmm. of care services, and also ensuring that uh, they are using equipments that are not causing injuries to these animals. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. we don't only work with uh, the donkey owners because some of the issues related to donkeys are attributed to society at large and how people animals like hurting them when maybe mm -hmm. they they trespassed to other people's farms and these yeah. are some of the things that we work with closely with the government with the veterinary mm -hmm. uh, providers so that we see mm -hmm. how do we ensure that the animals are taken care of and uh, another thing that we look at is the issue of uh, policies that are related mm -hmm. to livestock and ensure that uh, the government, because we work closely with the government, particularly the policy makers, ensure that they are able to look at uh, laws also friendly to these animals. Mm -hmm. And uh, my colleague uh, Peter can also talk about uh, what we do in terms of the veterinary service provision to these animals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um. Uh, tell us a bit about maybe some of the health issues that you come across um, as a vet in terms of donkeys. Okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> some of the uh, veterinary issues that we come across as we work in the community, um, mm -hmm. as my colleague has put, uh, we have cases of injuries. And uh, these injuries are normally attributed to poor harnessing. Uh, yeah. when, when these animals are loaded, if adequate 
adding is not provided, then mm -hmm. chances are that uh, uh, the, the, the load is going to cause abrasions, wounds, mm -hmm. which uh, potential uh, points of entry of pathogens. So yeah. uh, number one is uh, wounds. And secondly, we have some infectious conditions, uh, diseases. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And these might vary from region to region, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, most of them are vector-borne diseases that is transmitted by other uh, parasites. For example, mm -hmm. ticks, uh, yeah. uh, where uh, we operate in Western Kenya, we have the flood, yeah, and, and uh, other, other, other parasites. So uh, there are quite a number of uh, challenges uh, in terms of infectious diseases. And, uh, and then uh, we also have wood, uh, hoof problems. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm sure you might have come across animals with overgrown hooves. And you can imagine uh, you uh, that animal carrying a uh, yeah. car when mm -hmm. it cannot walk properly. So in such cases, you'll find um, them getting leg injury fractures. Yeah, uh, some hooves can also be pricked by sharp objects, then develop inside. And uh, where there is pass, uh, you know, it's very painful and the animal. Quite a lot of hoof conditions have just where pass, uh, accumulate in the hoof. I've mentioned uh, mm -hmm. among other conditions. Yeah. Okay. Laura, um, let's talk a bit about hide trade. There was a law that was put in place concerning hide trade. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, uh, in Kenya, uh, there has been um, the trade in donkey skin, particularly to trans to export to uh, the Asian countries, particularly to China. There has been existence of uh, four slaughterhouses in Kenya. The first one was established in, established in 2016. And... Uh, uh, through uh, the slaughterhouses, a number of donkeys were being slaughtered, uh, mm -hmm. almost a thousand per day in some in, in some instances. And looking at the number of donkeys in Kenya, the mm -hmm. last census of 2009, mm -hmm. there were 1.8 donkeys in Kenya. And uh, mm -hmm. when the slaughterhouses were slaughtering approximately 1,000 per day, it means wow. that donkey numbers are really reducing going and down, yes. this is going to was going to actually affect the communities that depend mm -hmm. on the, their livelihood and uh, through a lot of uh, support and interaction with the government and also mm -hmm. communities are uh, coming out to air their the, there are issues to the government regarding the effects of uh, the donkey slaughter. The government um, uh, came, at, came out strongly, and in, uh, in March this year, they will uh, revoke the licenses of the donkey slaughterhouses that have been okay. existing in yeah. Kenya. Mm -hmm. We so so Twenty twenty three. Mm -hmm. If uh, mm -hmm. on case slaughterhouses was continuing, then 
all the donkeys will have been depleted by then. So for us, all it's right. a, we really appreciate that because uh, the communities now can bounce back and continue doing what their work and mm -hmm. uh, they are living from these animals. Yeah. Um, so um, Laura is saying that um, the government has revoked the licenses of people who had slaughterhouses of donkeys because when the donkeys, the numbers go down and when the numbers go down, then that means people's livelihoods are being affected directly, as we said. And um, Laura, tomorrow is a special day for your organization and your partners as it is um, World Donkey Day. So um, what is it that you are celebrating tomorrow? Yeah, just to mention that uh, Brooke East Africa and her partners celebrate uh, National Donkey Day every 15th of May annually. Yeah. And um, mm -hmm. it's an event that has been ongoing since 2006. And mm -hmm. tomorrow I'll be marking 15 years of uh, such yeah. celebration. And uh, okay. the reason why we celebrate these animals during that day is to mm -hmm. it's to recognize the donkeys as the working livestock and also mm -hmm. highlight contribution to the communities yeah. and also to the economy of Kenya at large. And we yeah. do this not only as Brook East Africa and her partners, but also mm -hmm. in action with other animal welfare organizations and also yeah. the yeah other sector players when it comes to agriculture and livestock. And mm -hmm. uh, for this year, the, the main, we, we have actually been looking at it uh, from different perspective. And uh, besides the uh, recognition of this animal as a key player to the improvement of the wealth, improvement of the communities, we are also ce celebrating the revocation of the slaughterhouse, yes. as I mentioned, yes. and mm -hmm. also looking at the current situation that we are facing on the mm -hmm. pandemic on COVID-19. I don't mm -hmm. know how people think about this animal and how it's supporting the communities during this particular time. There are people mm -hmm. who depend on these animals to get water, not only in mm -hmm. uh, rural areas, but also in urban mm -hmm. areas. When you go to yeah, Naivash, sure. there are some people who are relying on these animals during this time mm -hmm. to provide water. Others are relying on it to transport uh, agricultural produce. And actually mm -hmm. in Europe and other areas, we rely on those. We, we actually want to get uh, to provide feed or put food to our table. And uh, mm -hmm. it's related to agriculture. In some mm -hmm. instances, that donkeys come in handy to support to support this sector. So we are also celebrating these animals given the situation because mm -hmm. they are still, despite there being curfew and uh, slowdown in terms of movement from one area to another, but mm -hmm. the animals are really continue supporting us. And yes. that's why we are celebrating them this year in that mm -hmm. sense. And uh, mm -hmm have a broader theme for mm -hmm. the day, which is uh, Donkey's Power for Resilient Livelihood. And okay. the subject is uh, Donkey's a partner for all seasons. And for mm -hmm. sure, a partner mm -hmm. for all seasons, looking at its country and how it's supporting us to, to move in whichever mm -hmm. circumstances. All right. Um, yeah. um, kindly, um, as we wind up, could you give maybe an advisory um, to any don donkey owners out there who are watching on how to take care of their um, animals in a better way so that they can improve their livelihoods? Okay. Uh, we... Value. Uh, donkeys mm -hmm. as well have their value uh, in mm -hmm. as, in our society. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. As you walk along Kenyan roads, mm -hmm. you will definitely see donkeys pulling carts. You will see donkeys carrying jerrycans or firewood on their backs. So yeah. they are doing that for a reason. 
Mm -hmm. uh, they are doing that to relieve our, our mothers of that uh, heavy load. Okay. Because otherwise they would carry it on their back, on their heads. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, if you lose that, so uh, what we need to do uh, as uh, with the farmers or donkey owners, one is to ensure that you give appropriate uh, load. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People usually ask how much load should a donkey carry. Yeah. Uh, a donkey should carry a load that is not uh, bigger than its live weight. Mm -hmm. For example, if a donkey is 100 kilograms, then it should mm -hmm. not carry load that is over 100, 100 kg. So yeah. if you give, yeah, if you give it mm -hmm. more, it will struggle. You are going to exhaust its energy. So tomorrow yeah. you will have uh, no, uh, it will have no energy to, to do your work. Uh, secondly, uh, they also need to uh, have time to eat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, every energy comes from food. Yeah, so if you work with it throughout the day, you work yeah. with it from morning to evening, and only leave it to feed at night when you are sleeping mm -hmm. and you are not sure if it is eating, then uh, yeah. you will not have a donkey to work uh, to help you do your work tomorrow. So mm -hmm. as you work, make sure you have uh, you uh, give it some time to feed. And okay. donkeys are very easy to feed, yeah, because mm -hmm. they just feed on grass. You only need to supplement uh, things like mineral, uh, mineral mm -hmm. leaks, so that it also gets uh, uh, all those uh, necessary uh, um, uh, minerals. Uh, Another thing is that when you are loading or you are working with uh, donkeys, because most injuries come when our donkeys are working. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So whenever you are working with your donkey, ensure that you keep it safe, avoid anything mm -hmm. that can cause injury. For example, if you have to put a, 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 a cart, yeah, ensure that you do appropriate padding so that you don't get um, wounds at the end of the, the day when you uh, yeah. when the donkey is going to rest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, thirdly, another one is that um, we need to be doing uh, what we call routine practices, routine disease yeah. management practices. Like uh, mm -hmm. we do spray animals. So mo mm -hmm. most times you'll find that uh, people tend to spray or dip uh, cows and other animals and forget about donkeys and in mm -hmm. most cases they do mm -hmm. these in the morning when donkeys mm -hmm. are out uh, working somewhere so uh, my plea is that let us ensure that we also uh, spray or uh, spray donkeys against mm -hmm. external parasites because if you don't and you spray other animals when they mingle mm -hmm. there is likely that they are going to uh, uh, transmit uh, this uh, parasite to these animals that you spray. Uh, there's also yeah. another thing, aspect of uh, controlling parasite called deworming. Yeah, the mm -hmm. internal parasites. Yeah, so yeah. these need to be done uh, at least twice a year, so that okay. uh, you know, you know, yeah, the parasites inside consume that food that uh, the donkey eats. Mm -hmm. So if the donkey eats a uh, little food and this little food is shared with the worms, then it means that donkey will be in a poor uh, condition. It will yeah. have no energy to do your work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so uh, it... okay. Mm -hmm. Laura. No. Um, okay, he's back. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, Laura, the country celebrated Labor Day just two weeks ago. Uh, maybe as we wind up, you could tell us how the donkeys needed to be celebrated on that day as well. Yeah, we we, we are actually celebrating donkeys during that day. Mm -hmm. Although it online in uh, online platforms. Uh, yeah. because, uh, 
of the invisible, we, we actually call it the invisible worker. We call donkeys invisible worker or the mm -hmm. silent worker because not many people recognize their, their contribution. And uh, during the day, we, we are celebrating donkeys because of uh, how they work. They are very hard working and uh, they always ensure that, uh, that they, they are there to provide services to the community and the people who depend on them. So, so for us, as we celebrated the donkey, we, we are also doing it to, to also sensitize people on the importance of this animal and uh, to, to, to also ensure that uh, the communities out there uh, irrespective of uh, who you are, uh, there's an uh, importance of understanding that uh, these animals have their, they, they have needs and there are also other animal welfare freedoms that are associated with uh, these animals. And uh, as uh, Peter, my colleague, was talking about uh, what we need to do to ensure that the donkeys are okay, uh, we look at it from the five animal welfare freedoms, which I would encourage every listener to, to really get these freedoms so that the donkeys can uh, Okay. So thank you so yeah. much for um, the We appreciate you for taking our time, to, taking the time to talk to us. Um, Laura and um, Dr. Peter, and um, we look forward to some good celebrations tomorrow. We also encourage all of you to follow us on uh, Twitter uh, using the hashtag uh, the National Donkey Day. We will be Donkey Day, yes. Uh, the National Donkey Day. We'll be having conversations around that and uh, we yeah. would really like to encourage you to join the conversation as we talk about okay. what's more. All right, there you have it. Now, as you've heard from um, Peter and Dr. Laura, we need to take care of, of our animals very keenly. Feed them, make sure they are deworm, just the same way as you deworm yourselves. These are um, invisible workers, as they have said, and they need our care. Yes, so if you have a donkey at home, please take those guidelines, and tomorrow let's join them in the celebration of World Donkey Day. So we are taking a short musical break, but don't you go anywhere. More Visa Kit coming your way.